Now, from the makers of Coldwater Omo, a light clicked on in Emma Peel's cell. She blinked furiously, trying to readjust her vision. Hands seized her, and the straitjacket was mercifully removed. The matron peered down at her. Now, if you decide to cooperate like a good girl, you won't be hurt. First, we'll remove the gag. <sighs> now, a few questions. Will you answer truthfully? Yes. You promise not lip service now. Yes. Not lip service. Teeth. Ah! Emma Peel's bite was always worse than her bark. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Episode 6 of this story, in which Colonel Morris Timothy, retired, realizes that John Steed's contribution to the cold cure clinic is not to be sneezed at. John Steed returned to his apartment later that night. The day had been a long one. Steed had an idea the night was going to be even longer. He telephoned Fawcett of the Institute of Allergic Diseases and was expecting him round. Perhaps it was a combination of the fact that he didn't put the light on and he was rather thoughtful that caused him to step right over an envelope lying on his doormat. Well, first things first, a large drink. Steed sipped his drink reflectively and began to pace to and fro. On the third perambulation... Something white caught his eye. He bent down, picked up the envelope, and studied it. Personal and private. John Steed, Esquire. Urgent. Ah, good news. They're on to me. And they can only mean one thing. At least I'm on the right track. Emma Peel had not found recent events very encouraging. It seemed the matron rather resented being bitten in her podgy forearm and was determined that Mrs. Peel should be cooled off. Uh, a period in the deep three should cool your temper, my girl. All right, put her in there. Uh, uh. Now the temperature gauge. Let's set it to um, sub-zero. That should do the trick. When Fawcett of the Institute of Allergic Diseases arrived at Steed's apartment, he wasn't in a very good mood. Never a cheerful man, he found being called out at night extremely irritating. He was quite prepared to give John Steed a piece of his mind. He rang the bell. But when the door opened, he recoiled in horror. A door, boy. Not out of space, just a gas box. Necessary for little experiment. Go ahead. What are you playing at, Steve? Inviting me round here so late. Oh, I should explain. Here, put this other mask on and come through. Oh, very well. There. Come through. Yes, it's, it's all right. Hold right, on. Come and watch this. Now, you see, I've received an envelope. Now, I have got reason to think it contains something rather deadly. So I slit the envelope, so, and tip the contents all over Mrs. Peel's treasured pot plant. Oh, dear. She's not going to thank me for that at all. The pot plant was positively wilting. What the devil's this all about, Steve? My dear Fawcett, that's why I've invited you here. I want you to tell me. Ah, oh, let's leave the rest of things a bit. Let, let me give you a drink. Oh, yeah, let's go through the mask, eh? 
Oh, well, never mind. It won't take long. I'm sure it'll clear soon. It's a question of temperature, in my belief. Do uh, sit down. It was a question of temperature that was bothering Mrs. Peel. The freezing chamber was, well, freezing. She tried jumping up and down. And then running round in circles. Poor Emma found that her exertions were wearing her out without making her warm. And she was quickly succumbing to the intense cold. Oh, for a drink. A nice, hot drink. Your drink, Fawcett. I think we can remove our masks now. Well, that seems to be safe enough. Now, the envelope. Anything left in there, do you think, Fawcett? There's enough. Oh, it's not dangerous now. It might be infective, but it's not lethal. Microscope seat. Uh, it's your elbow. Uh, slides on the desk. Uh, let's take a smear. Uh, now let's see. Uh. Mm. Anything left? Anything interesting? Uh, enough. I have to have it analyzed, of course, but my guess is that it's a common cold virus powder. Manufactured at a fantastic concentration. Virus powder? It sounds innocuous enough, but it'd be powerful enough to kill an elephant. So, so the victim would sneeze to death? If he didn't choke to death first. Well, how do you isolate a common virus? By a dry freeze, or rather a freeze-drying process. But how it, how it is concentrated to this extent is beyond me. Hmm. Death by post, huh? So simple. And so effective. Unsuspecting victim would stand no chance. Yes, but why ear, nose, and throat specialists? Cameras, Padley, Seaton, Herrick. What on earth do they have in common? Well, the tragedy is that if they'd realized what it was in each envelope, they would each have known how to deal with it. Why? Because they were all working in the same field. What field? Anti allergy research. You mean common cold allergies? Yes, yes, that's right. What I can't understand is why you haven't received one of these envelopes yourself. Probably because I'm only concerned with virus analysis. Whereas the dead men... We're concerned with antidotes. <sighs> Any one of them might have discovered one already, for all I know. So, if they'd lived, they would have been a constant threat to someone who has the facilities to produce this powder. Excuse me, Fawcett, it's late, I know, but I have to see a certain gentleman... Late retired. In the deep freeze room, Emma Peel had faced up to the fact that it just wasn't worth trying to keep warm by burning up energy. She looked around the place. Ooh. Oh, there's no way out except that small grating. Hmm. What size hips, I wonder? Well, I have been slimming lately. But how? It has possibilities. And I can never move it. Nothing here even to attempt it with. Nothing but silly tablets and medicines and... Now, what is this? Mrs. Peel stopped by a shelf of bottles. Prominent amongst the other packets of drugs was a packet labelled potassium chlorate tablets. Next to the packet was a bottle labelled ether. Mrs. Peel stared at them for some time. Uh, that gives me an idea. Potassium tablets. She reached up, took the packet, and began sprinkling a trail of tablets from the grating, which was almost at floor level, to the opposite side of the cell. She removed one shoe and began carefully grinding the tablets into a powder. Potassium chloride explodes under impact. So careful. Ether is inflammable. Well... Mix the two and hit out, and something's got to happen. <sighs> well, the grating's out, and so am I. Mrs. Peel squeezed her lissom body into the opening and found herself in an air shaft. It was a little drafty, but the temperature was near to normal. As she began crawling on all fours along the tunnel, she heard voices. Well, Steve should be out of the way by now. Seaton certainly is. Uh, there was one point when I thought the case was getting out of control. I was actually thinking of calling in the chief, but he wouldn't have liked it. It's all right, matron. There were no delivery complications. Steve will have found the letter by now. 
opened it, sniffed, <laughs> and snuffed it. Mm. So what's next? A final allergy test. And then we can start to eliminate the rest of the opposition. What kind of test? Oh, a very final one. We need a special guinea pig. It was at that point that Emma Peel, in the air shaft above the heads of the matron and priest, could go on no longer. She held her nose as hard as she could. What's the survival risk? No. And then how about using... Mrs. Peel's sneeze. <laughs> Locked her grip and shot down the air shaft, arriving with a clump and a sneeze at their feet. <laughs> how about using her? Ideal. Take her to the allergy laboratory. The chief can deal with her immediately. John Steed had knocked up a gentleman who'd just retired. Retired for the night, that is, as well as retired from the army. Colonel Morris Timothy, late, uh, well, we've gone into all that, was not at all pleased. He'd met Steed with a shotgun at the ready. Steed had done some swift talking, but... It's preposterous, uh, ridiculous. Murder by mail, deadly dust. <laughs> Even if it were true. I think you know it is true, Colonel. You, uh, you mean you... You suspect me? The colonel raised the shotgun. I don't know why you bother to deny it. You have all the cards. I don't believe in playing them. Uh, not in the habit of shooting people in cold blood. Colonel, if you hadn't got anything to do with this, then don't you see that you yourself would have got one of these envelopes before now? Eh? Well, now, bless my soul. I never opened my mail until morning, but look at this. On the tray ready with my breakfast thing. That's it. Colonel Morris Timothy, retired, most urgent. Now do you believe me? Friday to John Feed and Emma Field, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.